it's Jason here. Jason Pegler, owner of Chipmunker Publishing and former bipolar sufferer. So, welcome to my video. This video is all about helping anyone in the world who is diagnosed with bipolar disorder. <coughs> also their friends and family to give them an insight and uh, people who work in mental health as well. So, who am I and why am I talking about bipolar disorder? Well, let's go back in time a little bit. In 1992, I was diagnosed with manic depression and I spent six months in a psychiatric ward. And the day I left the psychiatric ward, they said, you've got manic depression. Um, I was a bit gutted to tell me that they had something like that. And for six weeks, I thought I was playing a computer game the first six weeks in the psychiatric ward. ward. Then I had an epiphany. Oh my God, I'm in the psychiatric ward in Coney Hill in Gloucester. The only way I'm ever going to get better is to psychoanalyze myself and create a Hollywood blockbuster movie therefore to make myself the success that I envisaged I was going to be before this horrible experience and I want to help everyone in this room because I know they feel humiliated for being in the loony bin. At the same time I had this burning desire to help another 17 year old in the future from I wanted them to be able to cope better mentally than I was at that moment in time because I didn't know where to go or what to do. So that's been my lifelong mission. Fast forward to 2012, which is when I'm making this video and I'm 36 years of age. I've been off medication since 2005. What was the breakthrough for me? Well, lots of breakthroughs. Um, writing is creativity and publishing is empowerment. I started writing film scripts at 19 and I got a 2-1 degree in classical studies. So this is, I had four manic episodes, spent over a year in hospital and two years suicidal. This is between 1993 and 2000. But mentally, I always knew that I would get over it because I've always been a fighter, really. I used to play um, rugby for Gloucester under 16 level. And I used to play a lot of chess when I was younger. I won a lot of chess tournaments, um, Gloucestershire chess tournament and Gloucestershire under 15, Gloucester under 11, where they had 250 people, 244 people entered that and I came first. So always liked a little bit of a challenge really and I spent the last 15 years heavily into personal development all the you know self-help motivational uh, amazing amazing people like Jim Rohn Brian Tracy Tony Robbins all this kind of all these kinds of people you know and what really gave me the lift was setting up my own publishing company and I was able to do that by writing my autobiography on manic depression bipolar disorder in 2000 and it's called A Can of Madness and that's helped a lot of people in that people say it's the most vivid portrayal of mania ever written which I'm quite flattered by really. When I wrote it, I thought it was a book about the ecstasy generation and I'd, you know, kind of gone wrong. And I thought it was the, you know, like you've got Train Spotting, it was a great film. I thought, oh, that's gonna be a book about the ecstasy generation, the kind of madness of film. And I'm sure, <coughs> uh, I'm sure it will be one day. So, why am I here to, to talk to you? What can I do for you? Well, I can give you some great advice on 
living with your bipolar, but first I want to tell you a little bit about um, Chip Monk Publishing and the mental health publishing company that I set up. So it's Chip Munka, C H I P M U N K A Publishing. Just Google that and find it. Chipmunker.com, C H I P M U N K A.com, Chipmunkerpublishing.co.uk, Chipmunkerpublishing.com. Over the last 11 years, I've published 600 different authors. We have 900 ebooks and around about 750 paperbacks. The books are available to purchase on our website and online bookshops or, or, and physical paperback bookshops all over the world to order as well. So what we do is give a voice to people with mental illness through writing and publishing and then it can open doors for them and really help them in quite a few ways. And it's great really, it's being able to work for myself has boosted my self-esteem and that helps my condition as well. It was in 2005 that I went to a Tony Robbins event and it blew my mind and it gave me the confidence to come off medication. I've written several books. So I wrote A Can of Madness, Curing Madness, The Ultimate Guide to Wellbeing, Mental Health Publishing and Empowerment, Mental Health Raps, Unlimited Confidence Smashes the Fear of Mental Illness, that's a home study course that's available on MP3, DVD, and there's a written home study course as well. Then even if you go to the website, we've always got 50 free ebooks you can download as PDFs from our website on all different mental illnesses. But like I said, this is about bipolar. So <clears throat> I've also got a free booklet, 16 must know, must know techniques to conquer your bipolar. You can find that at um, Conquering bipolar, conquering bipolar disorder. Co. Uk, and if you go to the Chipmunk website as well, you can find that. So, I really want to help anyone in the world with bipolar. So, if you're told you've got bipolar for the rest of your life and you're 15 years old or 60 years old, there is hope. I'm telling you now, there is hope. Okay, so relax. What do you need to do? to make yourself better, to live the life that you, that you want to lead, or to help someone go through it better than they can. Well, obviously it knocks your confidence of humiliation, okay? So you need to somehow, you need to boost your self-esteem and push it right back up again. What's the best way to do that? There's loads of best ways to do that. Get into personal development, whatever it is, okay? Um, talking about getting into self-help, change your belief systems. Try incantations, talking to yourself. I like myself, I love myself, I am great, I'm a better person, okay? And you need all these strategies, they can lift you like you would never know. Even try them at night, just before you go to bed, so it goes into your unconscious mind, so wake, when you wake up, you are happier. Um, listen to CDs and do this. I have products that do this. In, in my experience, the best ones, you know, play Paul McKenna in some confidence. It is mega, okay? It's cost you seven or eight pounds. And a free plug for Paul there, but the guy is a genius, okay? So, now, think about, okay, bipolar. You've gone bipolar, you've gone crazy, you've gone off your head, okay? That's, it's a social construct, okay? But something's happened to you, you've gone off your head, you, you're somehow different to other people, okay? Now, you need to manage your life better. You need to make sure you sleep better. You worried you can't sleep. Paul McKenna, I can make you sleep. Another one. Okay. Download my free booklet. Get those 16 must know techniques at overcomingbipolardisorder.co.uk. It's common sense, really. You know what's good for you in life, okay? Exercise. Preferably during the day, in the morning, in in the afternoon, even if you're oh, well overweight, you don't be careful to go to a gym or whatever, just get up and go for a walk. Stop sitting and watching television, sat on your own, get out and meet people, talk to people. Even if you don't know anyone, just get out and say hello and you know 
to anyone, someone in a shop or something, you know, just be friendly. Someone on the bus, just say, hello, nice morning, isn't it? Get yourself out there, get some exercise, get some oxygen, okay? And really, and smile as well. Force yourself to smile, okay? <laughs> Force yourself to smile, okay? When you smile, use 50, 50 muscles. When you frown, you use 16. So if you smile more, you're gonna use more energy, which means you're going to feel better, you're going to get more oxygen into your lunch, okay? Then, what else can you do? Well, try eating healthier, okay? If you haven't got much money, it can be difficult. But you know it's pretty obvious what is healthy and what isn't. And, and you know brown bread better than white bread. Less E numbers. Drink more water, okay? Drink eight glasses of water a day. It's common sense, all these things come common sense. Cut out too much caffeine, you know. So don't have more than three cups of coffee a day. Don't have them after one o'clock or two o'clock because it can stop you sleeping, okay? Cut out the sweets addiction to sugar, you know. Just trim it down a bit. I'm not saying like stop this, this, this and this. Just do what's good for you. Surround yourself by positive people in your life, okay? You might be, it could be horrendous, okay? You might be you could be a heroin addict, I don't know. You might not have any friends, you might be socially excluded, you might be paranoid, okay? You just need to surround yourself by positive people that are a little bit more and make the decision to do that now, today. Don't procrastinate, don't say, oh yeah, tomorrow is gonna happen. Don't ever be a tomorrow person, be a now person, take action now. Take responsibility for your life, okay? Stop your blaming, stop blaming other people for things. We all do this all the time, every day. Everyone in the world blames people for some things, okay? At some point, nobody's perfect, none of us are perfect. But just look to improve yourself, just raise your standards every day. You know, visualize a happier self, visualize a happier life. All, everything I'm saying to you is common sense and it's about taking action as well. Also, forgive yourself if you've behaved in a way that is um, really upset you, that nags at your conscience as well. Forgive yourself now for everything that's happened and start afresh like a new person, a novice homo, as they say in, in ancient Rome, a new man, okay? A new man, a new woman. Just forgive yourself and start a day, you know, you know. Also, improve your mind, okay? Read more. If you can't read, listen to things that are good for you, okay? Now, if you haven't got any money, if you can get to the internet, whatever country you're in, you've got more chance of getting to the internet now for free, right? Or, you know, very little amount of time. Or even find someone who has internet. Go onto YouTube, watch positive videos, search for positive words. You know, if you go on YouTube and search inspiration, something like that, Motivation. Look at motivational books. Look at the most successful people in history and model them. Life is a study, okay? If you want to be happy, study happiness. If you want to sleep, study sleep. If you want to cure yourself from bipolar disorder, look at other people who've cured themselves, okay? People who don't relapse, people who better. How did I change my life? I'm made the decision to take responsibility for my life and I make I don't just make that decision once I make that decision every day and as many times as I can every day I used to force myself to smile for the first five minutes of every day as soon as I woke up run in front of the mirror force myself to smile put me in such a positive peak state that even if I tried to be miserable I couldn't I'm serious do something dramatic do something that you've never done before to improve your state. I want to re-emphasize, exercise is so important to you, okay? Just also how you perceive yourself in the world. Look at your conscience, look at your heart, feel, feel the universe around you, feel the love around you, the, the world, whatever you've been through, the world in many ways is a great place and we're all part of the universe in some way and there's this kind of beauty about life that we never know what's going to happen and it's as though we get challenged for a reason and 
what I want you to experience, what I want you to understand is even by watching this video, you don't know me, you may never see me before, you may never see me again, but I'm talking to you now because I care about you and or your family member or the people that you want to help because I want people who are diagnosed with bipolar disorder to feel that they're part of society. I don't want them to feel humiliated. The same is true for every mentally on this. And I want there to be a world in 50 years time where there's kind of no such thing as mental illness because we all realize that everyone's whenever we're born we all die whatever our religious beliefs we all leave the earth in some way okay whatever our spiritual beliefs whatever religion that we believe in or if we're a agnostic or atheist or whatever so we're all kind of part plugged into the matrix or not plugged into the matrix as we as we should be what's important though is to is to recognize where we are at this moment in time and we can feel that energy and be part of that universe you know power of now and cartel we all know about this kind of thing if you don't check it out that's a great resource okay so we all know about this kind of thing but life, every second, life depends on the choices that we make. Every nanosecond, every millisecond, it's about the choices that we make determines where we end up. Where we focus on determines where we end up. So tell yourself, I can improve the way that I manage my bipolar disorder from today. I'm going to, from this moment in time, from this second, I'm going to, I'm going to decide to change and and improve my life. I'm going to improve my life. Now, build up your self-esteem. I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. Say it with me. I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. Because the more you say that to yourself, the more you will love yourself and the more compassion you'll have for other people, the more you'll be able to help other people as well. I would like you to, if this video helps you, okay, if coming into contact with this video has helped you in any way, what I would like you to do is share just commit one thing for me okay just commit that you're going to help somebody else who has whether it's bipolar disorder if you see someone sad at some some time within the next seven days just please try and help them now whether that's a smile whether that's for 30 seconds or you really want to go for it and commit an hour to helping someone you don't know if it's a homeless person stop by and talk to them if it's someone you see unhappy, spend a time, just spend a minute or two asking them, are they okay? Even if it's a shopkeepers or, or whatever it is, how are you to do and say, how are you today? And say it and mean it. That's all I'm asking for you. So I'm reaching out to you through the video. I want to, I want to help you and, and anyone that's listening. And I believe that people are essentially good as well. And I believe that we all would like the idea of helping people if we can. And but, but life can become very busy and, and it's a real challenge to manage our time, to be able to juggle everything so that we have a balance, which whether it's a... <coughs> balanced work life, home life, exercise, friends, social life, all these kinds of things. And in order to do that, a very helpful tool is learning what our values are in life as well. And if you find this video is helping you now, and it's really taking you to a positive place that you haven't been for a while, or that you forgot, or maybe even where you've never been before slightly or just somewhere that you forgot at one moment in time whatever it was that's happened in your life let's just start writing some notes down now some positive things some positive words that can come in into your life one great thing as well that you can do is set goals every day I mean that is so so important I'm setting goals all the time on my phone and you can change the goals that you set don't worry about that so don't say oh I have to do this goal and follow this goal through. It's so important to set goals. That's what 
is a big difference between people who really achieve and become successful and become well known in the history of the world and people who, who don't leave their way in such a profound way but even if you want to be the better best parent you want to be you know which is just as noble a thing being a mum is the hardest job in the world I'm, I know I've got two kids and I've and I see it it's just you know being a dad is the most difficult job I've ever had as well so um, what I would say is just just embrace life as well just decide that you're going to be the person that sees the glass as half full and every time you see it as half empty just kind of see as half full just nod your head now just draw a draw a smiley face and a couple of dots and a smile by it just smile and be happy just feel the happiness in the world just just go inside your heart and feel the happiness and just even cl you know close your eyes if you're not driving and just close your eyes for a few moments and I just want you to smile and feel happy just feel happiness just think of something that's made you the happiest you've ever been think it think it of the uh, birth of one of your children or the first time you met the person you fell in love with or your favorite football team scoring a goal whatever it is or the first time you made love or when someone said something nice to you just close your eyes please please close your eyes and just think about how great that feeling is and was and, and then bring that feeling back now and just enjoy enjoy that feeling and think of sharing that feeling with the next person that you see the next person in your life that you see and be a positive influence on those around you. Clo close your eyes still and think also, okay, so you can help those people around you. Also now reach out now and think of someone that you may never have met that inspires you unbelievably. Or it could be someone that you know that inspires you. And now open your eyes, okay, now smile and think of yourself, inspiring yourself as well. So what I want you to do really is just love life, love being alive and just think of everything good in your life and, and just feel that, feel that it's not so bad. Whatever you've been through, it's not so bad. What helped me a lot, the last time I was suicidal 12 years ago was I was feeling sorry for myself and it was you know it was horrific in psychiatric ward and I was reading Nelson Mandela's Long Walk to Freedom and it just made me snap out of it and I stopped feeling so sorry for myself I thought well, this guy's been through so much more than me and look how much he managed to do with, with his life what positive a force for mankind and the world Nelson Mandela is and just think about how huge the world and the universe is as well just think of the little planet earth that we're on and all the other planets out there and galaxies and all this kind of thing um, doesn't that make you feel kind of your problems kind of feel trivial in a way because you think well there's this whole universe out there there must be some way there must be some reason for all of this it just seems a bit weird that it's just bang you know so you know even if you can't think well what's the reason for it it's just you know it's an incredible how it all happened or how it all came around and I think it, you know it really is an amazing thing um, and So if you're caring for someone with bipolar disorder, just try and get your, try and understand, what I'd really recommend is that you read A Can of Madness. Um, um, it's really important for you if, if you have bipolar disorder, because it will make you understand 
but you'll see all the highs and lows reading down that I went through and you'll think, oh my God, I'm not on my own, okay? I'm not on my own. And if you're a carer, you'll think, now I understand how my mum or daughter or son or father felt um, and feels and you'll be able to empathise and build rapport with them. And if you build rapport with them, then you can help them to a better degree. And if you're working in mental health as well, it will help you connect with people with bipolar and it will show you some, you know, by understanding about chipmunk publishing and how I've worked with so many people with mental illness over the years and got amazing results in, uh, they've got their own amazing results in recovery and, and writing has been part and publishing has been part of the experience. It will help you as well. So just really, really think about how if you can have this connection with other people with bipolar around the world, then you're not on you're not on your own, you understand them more, and when we understand people more, there's we increase our learning. There's never an end to learning. And I think that is really, really, really important as well. Listening to people as well is a, is a great skill and it's very important. And it's something that people with bipolar, in my experience, don't tend to be very good at because you can get quite excited, you know, people are quite passionate, very creative and things like that. Also, harness your creativity. If you want to write something, if you want to write something, you think about being published and you've got bipolar, <coughs> we've got to do is get to 10,000 words and get it to me. I need to um, go to the contact us page on Chipmunk Publishing and read, read up on it. And I will really, really do my best to help you. Just got to get in meet for a format so that I can do something with it. And if you understand the mission of the company, then, I'll, um, then I will endeavour to give you a voice. Just read up everything is on the website, leave any information there. Please feel free to leave some feedback on this video and say more that you'd like to see because I'm going to be doing more videos on overcoming your bipolar disorder. Let's reiterate that sleep is hugely, hugely important and like sleep at, sleep at night, get enough sunlight as well. It's just such simple things. Don't spend too long on a computer even. Um, you know, stop watching as much television. Just so, just so many common things. Surround yourself by a higher, a higher peer group. So, and if you don't know the people personally, just you know, get out of a book. Just start feeding yourself with instead of mental, you know, junk, junk food. Just mental. Uh, uh, in a, in, a, in a sense, if you like. So, you know, really healthy, healthy stuff. Mental fruit and veg, okay? Mental apples, mental bananas, whatever it is. Uh, this is mental lettuce. This is really important. And push yourself further, you know, if you're going down the gym today, uh, and you know, you go for a little bit of a workout, when you push yourself to do that extra five push-ups? Because we can always do another five, can't we? So think about how the more and more you push yourself, the more you stretch yourself as a person, the more you will become. And the more you will become, the more you'll be able to manage your bipolar better, overcome your bipolar better, conquer your bipolar better. The more you understand about bipolar and the more you model other people who've got better, who are leading the lives they want to lead, leading great lives, the, the more you'll get from it, the more you'll be able to help yourself, and in the future, the more people you'll be able to help. I really have to stress it again. Get your sleep right and things can go a lot better. If you have a psychiatrist, psychologist, all this kind of thing, then 
you know, get them to see you as a human being first, not as a patient, okay? Liaise with them about, um, you know, what you're on. Look for something positive so that they can speak with you. And, you know, hopefully they can, you can get the right balance for your medication or you can, they can reduce it with the strategies that you have in place and keep putting in place and that you can get better. You've got to take responsibility of your life. And what I'm advocating above anything is take the responsibility for your life, liaise with uh, whatever professionals there are, but look at people who've got better, okay? Check out neurolinguistic programming. Check out Richard Bandler, B-A-N-D-L-E-R. In my opinion, um, the most intelligent person alive in the planet today really believe that. My speciality is mental health publishing. That's where I can help. And bipolar cure, I totally believe that. Okay. So keep in, keep in touch. Please let friends know about this, people that you know about this. There's someone out there who cares. You've got a neuro and you can listen. Feel free to comment. You've got a publisher. If you can be folk enough to write something, if you want that, it can open doors for you. Wherever you are around the world, I'm based in London. But I publish people all over the world. And why do I do that? Because it helps me every time I get another book out. I know publishing helps me. Every time I get another book out, it helps me and really raises my confidence. And I know it, you know, it makes a difference uh, to other people as well. So thank you so much for listening to me today and remember chipmunker.com c-h-i-p-m-u-n-k-a.com please go to there check out the website we want to help i want to help i want the mental health publisher i want to help you and overcoming bipolar disorder.co.uk for the free booklet okay love you lots take care everyone and please help someone else in their mental health as well today